All right, Rochelle McCray from Wisely. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Michael. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm excited to see you in Seattle, in part because we've never met face to face, but also I'm excited to hear more about Wisely and what you're building. This is a category of food waste reduction for the home that I think needs more innovation. And tell the audience that's listening in about Wisely and what it is. So Wisely is a smart food storage container company that's trying to help us reduce waste from farm to table. That's awesome. And at first you are building a home product and then you're going to go into different parts of the food value chain. Yeah, so we're actually launching with our consumer facing product um, to help us all manage our leftovers and the things that we're actually storing in our fridge. But we do also have other applications for other parts. So considered B2B or um, like farming, things like that. And this is something building a food waste product, a technology product, is something fairly new to you. I mean, you've had a long career in media, QVC, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How did you make this journey from being a TV person to building a product? <laughs> Sometimes I ask myself the same question. <laughs> um, so I spent I spent more than 20 years in television. I owned a production company early on. I was a producer. Um, I spent the majority of my career as a television host, and I worked for major networks like NBC and ABC, and I worked for celebrity entertainment companies. Um, and then I eventually moved into the home shopping era of my life, which was at QVC, the home shopping channel. And so um, what was very interesting and unique about my journey is that I don't, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit because I did own a production company. It is how I broke into the entertainment industry. I've never taken my, my, my career path has never been a straight line. It's always been more of like a curve um, and lots of twists and turns. But it's interesting because now as a founder of a tech hardware company, which I never thought would follow my name, quite frankly, um, you know, the the things that I learned through television actually weave very beautifully into into what we're doing now. And even more so the experience that I had in home shopping, it taught me a lot about how products are made, where they're made, why they're made, why we buy things, when we buy things, how we buy things. And so I got to really understand that how us as consumers operate. And for me with Wisely, wisely really just started as a frustration out of out of my own home and it kind of went from there but it's interesting why all of the things that i've done throughout my career which which have been helpful as a founder of, a, of the company was there a aha moment or like some something that happened to you that you said you know something needs to, needs to be done about this food waste problem i can't find a, the top order's not working etc what happened there what's the origin story so it's it's twofold for me, which is very interesting. So in 2016, um, my husband and I, we, we got married and we were frustrated. I, I would go to the grocery store and um, come home with things that we already had or we had already made. I was only cooking for two people. Um, I wasn't very good at managing my food inventory. And if I'm being honest, I thought I was just the only one. <laughs> I thought like- No, you're not, you're not, definitely. <laughs> together, you know, and I, I remember looking at my husband and I said, look, I know we got all this really great stuff from our wedding registry. Cause that's, let's be honest, Michael, that's, it's a really fun part about getting married is getting yeah, all yeah. of this really wonderful stuff for your first of course, home. Of course. But you know, it was like, wait a minute, why didn't I think to register for something that would help me with my food waste? So I looked at him and I said, I don't care how much it costs or where I'm going to find it. I'm going to go buy this thing to complete our kitchen because I'm wasting so much money by throwing out food that we very well could have eaten. And what was interesting about it is when I went looking, there was not, there was nothing to be found. You know, I couldn't find the thing that was going to tell me what was stuck at the back of my fridge. I couldn't find the thing that was going to alert me of what was already in my fridge that I could make or or be reminded of when I was out and about. And so that was part of how Wisely got started. The, the second part of this is actually more than just a frustration. It was it's a very personal thing, which is, um, you know, there is an abundance of resource in the world. And I do understand that that, you know, we have to protect them and we need to work on our farming and the soil. And there's a lot of things going on to continue these resources. But right now there's so much food that's wasted and there's so many people that are hungry. And it literally keeps me up at night that people are hungry. And then there are people who are very privileged that have the opportunity 
to have food that wastes in the back of their fridge and we throw it away like it's trash and it's not trash. It's something that we should be in, you know, appreciating, enjoying, ingesting all those things. So um, it's kind of twofold. Number one, that bothers me. But number two, it's frustrating that it's also happening and it shouldn't be happening. So that was kind of how it started. And in terms of this category, you know, we've seen a few startups over the past couple of years, yourself included, but the, the category itself hasn't seen a lot of innovation. I feel like I'm still using the same plastic storage containers my mom used when I was a yeah. kid. And yeah. I'm still, you know, it's, it's partly a behavior change issue. So I'm focused on yeah. it, but that's mm -hmm. still, there's no thing that's helping me do this better other than like me just be more conscious of it, which is important. Why hasn't there been a lot of innovation here? I think I think is multifaceted to your point the behavior change is really the thing that we're focused on because Michael let's be honest like and I, I say this a lot and I, I say this even coming from the shopping channel background which is there is an abundance of things to store our food that is not the problem the problem is not that we don't have glass or plastic or a color that matches our kitchen or something that fits nicely in the it with whether we have a big fridge or a small fridge like the options really are endless it's not that we don't have it it's that we are people who are always moving. We are connected to smart devices now. We are constantly um, in, a, in, an, in, an, in a world where we're getting information to make our lives better. And I think we are now just getting used to that. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I always talk about the evolution of the smart home when I talk about Wisely because there is this, there's, there's no need for more smart food storage containers. There just really isn't. But there is a need for when you talk about innovation, the innovation of the smart home has going, been going on for a decade. We look at doorbells, thermostats. Um, we talk about coffee mugs. We talk about security cameras. If you really look at how we live our lives, like if I go into my phone right now, I can go out of the country and I know who's at my front door and I know what my temperature is set at and i know you know what i know the things in my life and i think yeah. that in this space it's just the next evolution and i think that it makes the most sense to also answer the question of why it's so difficult i think when you talk about putting batteries in the cold batteries in the freezer when you talk about making things rechargeable when you talk about the tech of it we have to make sure that the tech is even there. And 10 years ago, I don't think it was there. I mean, you know, one of the things that we've worked on is the actual, how it works, how it's going to last for people long enough. What, yeah. what, how are we doing? What are we doing with our circuitry? How, you know, so it's a lot, I think it's something that you have to consider the behavior change aspect. How do we do that? Who do we call in? What experts do we need? But then we yeah. also need to talk about the technology aspect and make sure that it will work in something like, a cold, wet fridge sometimes. So I think that's also part of the challenge is where things currently exist and using the things on the shelf or off the shelf, excuse me, without completely trying to reinvent brand new technology that could take five years to make or, or whatnot. Yeah, exactly. And so changing consumer behavior to focus a, a bit more on that. Yeah. How, how can we get consumers to be conscious of food waste? Is it just showing them in a, like a, an app that, hey, you've wasted this much, which translates to this much dollar value? Because I think that worked a little bit with Nest. Yeah. You know, for, for the first time when Nest came out, we were seeing how much we were saving and dollars and cents add up in people's minds and that makes a difference. Is that the same? You think it's the same for food waste? Can we show them how much food they're wasting or how much food money they're saving uh, by, by doing that? Uh, and does that ultimately convert to behavior change? Yeah. And, and what I would say is it's funny when we did our customer discovery. So we've done extensive customer discovery, especially with my background and with what I did at the shopping channel. Like we have, um, we've really been able to lean into that, which, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to build a product that I wanted. I wanted to build a product that people wanted that solved a problem. Otherwise, why am I doing this? I could spend five years building whatever I like, and it doesn't mean anybody else is going to like it too. And so what we realize is, you know, I didn't know anything about behavior change before any of this started. I just knew I had a frustration and wisely was granted an SBIR grant through the EPA. And what we were able to do during that time frame was look into things like, why are we doing this? And what we found was it is ultimately, again, like we talk about this behavior change issue and we've seen behavior change in people. And what it is, is it's more about being conscious of what you're doing. And to your point, knowing 
why you're doing it or how much. Like people talk yeah. about when we talk to them, they're very aware that they're wasting food. They're frustrated by it. Yeah. No one likes to waste food. No. And groceries are expensive. Right. Yeah. And so like, we are very well aware of it, but nobody can figure out like how to make it better just with what we have. And so even it's not that people don't know, but when you actually put dollars and cents to it and say, did you know that last year you wasted $2,600 on uneaten food in your kitchen? People go, I, what, you know, they're what? yeah, that's crazy. About? a vacation. Yeah. That's Savings that's real dollars. That's real dollars. Real dollars. And so the the question becomes, how do we do that? And really, it's about visibility when we're home or whether we're away, whether we're standing in front of the fridge or we're not. We need to know what's going on because, you know, when you're not remembering what you I don't I don't know about you, Michael, but when I leave and I go run errands or I'm out with my family, it seems so much easier sometimes just run to the grocery store, grab something to get. But I have so much food sitting in there. Right. Wouldn't it be nice if I could pull up in live time the way I can look at my thermostats or anything else and say, well, what do I actually have? Oh, here's a recipe suggestion as well. Okay, I only need to go to the store to get two items instead of spending. Because the other problem is, Michael, is we buy too much. Like yep. we plan on letting people in on the insights of what's going on in their home so they can make better decisions because we can't fix what we don't know is happening. And um, it's it's a really big, interesting topic because, again, it's not about the product itself. It's about how we're going to leverage making us more aware of what's happening. And it is interesting when you tell people how much food they waste, they just they're they're in shock. And when we were measuring during the during some of our um, studies and working through the product, when we would show people like, oh, did you know that this is how much food you threw out last week? I mean, people are just they they're yeah. like flabbergasted you know, they know it, but they don't know it. And all of a sudden they're like, well, I'm not doing that next week. You know, it, it bothers them. It upsets them. So um, it's interesting to see how many of us have the same issue. <laughs> so. That tracking of food inventory, that really seems like the holy grail. It seems like it's really difficult because like I've seen the refrigerators with cameras in them. Um, there's maybe food mm -hmm. logging apps, mm -hmm. but consumers get lazy. Um, you know, my wife may buy something or my daughter may buy something, put it in the fridge and I don't, unless they're tracking, you know, so how do you, I mean, you don't have to give all the, the secrets away, but like that, it seems like the big challenge tackling that tracking of what's live in, in your, in your fridge and across your pantry from an inventory yeah. perspective. Yeah. Do you feel like you guys have had that, you have that tackled? Yeah, I think it'll be something that will be a highlight of the product is being able to kind of track what's going on when you put it in without always having to do the work. I think to your point, when we expect people, you know, you can't introduce a product and have people do 15 new behaviors. It doesn't make a lot of sense. We, you know, I, when I spoke at Refed last year, we kind of talked about this on the panel, which is like, if you throw too many things at people, when you behavior change, you kind of give up. It's like the new year's resolutions is what I, you know, yeah. I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to do this and I'm going to save money and I'm going to do this. And then one right. month in, they find that like 90% of us have already lost you know, half of our New Year's resolutions, it's because we're trying to do too many things at once. And so with Wisely, we're trying to give people the autonomy of being able to make those choices and behavior habits. But then we're also doing a lot of the work for them with reminder systems and things like that, so that they don't have to do the extra work if they don't want to, but it's there if they do want to go and have a, a different type of experience with the product. All right, looking forward you're building this company, your product is coming out in 2025. What, can you give us an idea when, when the ETA is, ETA is on that? Yeah. So we are doing, we're opening pre-orders, um, later this year. We do, to be clear, we do have product, uh, that's being iterated on because as a founder, you know, I mean, I don't know, I feel like I could iterate it to death and never, and never put it out. So you've got to get to a point where you just need to to let people start using it beyond the the test cases. So um, we're looking at pre-orders this year, which will be exciting. And then we'll actually get the first products into our first official users beyond the test groups um, next year. So um, it should be exciting. Uh, it's going to be one of those things where we'll roll it out and, you know, we'll, we'll work through everything and try to build it and make it better, faster, cheaper. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? That's the, that's the whole point of it all. So we, we want to be competitive in the market. You know, we are working to basically open a space that doesn't exist. And I think when you do that, I mean, I don't, I don't have 
that background, right? I've never opened a category, you know, for something before, but I think that you just, we just put one foot in front of the other. We have a lot of really good advisors. We have a lot of really good backers that have come alongside of us. We have places like the Spoon and the Smart Kitchen Summit and Refed and all of these, uh, the EPA and all these really amazing opportunities to connect with people in the industry. And I think that as a whole, we all have the same goal, which is to preserve these resources, to save money, to save food, to save time. And I think that collectively between our product and then some of the other ones that are coming out that, that do different things, I do think that it's a multifaceted tackle. Like I don't personally think one product is going to solve all the food waste problems in the world. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to take several of us, you know, and systems to really make it work. Will it be on QVC at some point? <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Let me, I will put it to you this way with my home shopping background. You know, there are certain things that I, I know very well. Uh, and I think that yeah. it will hopefully benefit wisely and the people who want to find it places. Rochelle McRae, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for having me, Michael.